We're gonna to switch to using a fro now to split out these backs. Um, the only reason to use a fro is to have control over the split. So we could use a wedge at this stage, but it's just easier to use a, uh, use a fro. Um, for, I don't know, or maybe I just prefer to use a fro, I don't know. At any rate, so I'm gonna use a break in conjunction with the fro. Um, this is just a split branch, and that's really the, the best break I've, I've found. I like, I like the simplicity of it, I like the, the varying places you can put the, the piece of wood in there to make sure that you have it at the right angle, it's easy to work. Um, and then you just, of course, have a couple cross branches here that, that hold it uh, up off the ground. A little longer one than this would be nice. Uh, so it, it doesn't fall down as easily and so you uh, have more places to put the back there, or, or your piece of wood in there, I should say. Um, so go ahead and put it in there. <coughs> Um, and then take the fro. I'm gonna split it tangentially now, uh, now that I've got it in eighths. So tangentially is parallel with the bark there. Um, I need to put the fro, so the back is, is two inches in this plane. So I'm gonna split it out about two and a half or something to give myself a little leeway. Let me go get my rule that fell down there. Uh, so that's two and a half right there. Um, so, the, but but more importantly than two and a half, it needs to be in half. So I want to have an equal amount of mass here as I do there, um, which I also have. So I got lucky. Sometimes I have to split it, you know, three inches or something to get enough so it doesn't enough wood so it doesn't run out on this back side here. So uh, when you raise your right hand with the club, you tend to drop your left hand, and then you hit it and it comes down the wrong spot. So uh, the fro comes down the wrong spot so you want to make sure that you disassociate your left hand from your right hand when you do this um, and then just give it a solid whack or two or three or four until the blades buried below the surface of the wood otherwise it'll just pop back out again um, now that's so i want to look over here and see whether these are this cracks running centered. So it looks like it's running a little bit down towards this uh, bottom side, which is the side I want to keep. Um, so I'm going to flip this thing over. I want the thicker side down so that the crack will tend to run towards that thicker side. Um, so I can put the thicker side down and wrangle this thing into position here and then put pressure on that lower side a little bit or as much as possible to try and get the crack to run down towards that side oops so by putting weight on that lower side i'm uh, stressing that side hopefully um, in order to run the crack down to that lower thicker side um, so this is pretty thick i may not weigh enough to stress that side much, but that's the idea. Um, so let me open that up there and stick something like my fro club handle in there. Keep the split open. Stick my fro down there. Pop it open. That went well. So that's the side with the pith on it. So it might make some spindles or something, but it's not going to make a back. There's a there's a knot down there that, that we don't want. So we'll uh, throw that over for future reference. And now we're gonna split it, gonna split it radially. Um, so I need to put my fro, and again, we have to split it in half. So I need to put my fro halfway between this point and this point. And also halfway between this point and that point, this piece of wood I'm splitting is a trapezoid, so I've got to make sure I have equal mass on both sides of the split there. Um, so, oops, dry that down. Get it propped up in there correctly. Look and see what's going on. That looks perfect. There's an equal amount of wood on both sides of the split there. And this side looks pretty good too, so I should be, whoop, now it's running downhill. So see, I got way more wood on the bottom, I mean, way less wood on the bottom than I do on the top. So 
I'm gonna flip this thing back over and I'm gonna put a lot of weight on the lower side and pop it open there. All right, let's see what we got here. So this one would make two still, so I'm gonna throw that one over there. And split this in half here. So now I've got it thin enough where I really do have a lot of control over the split because my weight will be able to bend the lower half of this fairly easily. So I can really control the split as I'm going along. So I want to pay close attention. It looks like to me that this side is thinner than that side is. So I'm going to slide it down to where I can get some weight on that lower side and put my weight on it before I start twisting the handle. So I'm putting my weight on it and then I'm rotating that handle. And yeah, it's starting to run down a little bit. Let's look at this side. That looks good. Put a little bit more weight on it. Oop, now it's centered. So put my hand in there to keep it open. Not really OSHA approved, but it works. And just run it down. Beautiful. Gorgeous. So there we have our back ready for the initial draw knife work. This is Joshua Farnsworth. If you're interested in learning traditional woodworking with hand tools, visit my website at woodandshop.com where you can find free video tutorials, workshop tours of amazing traditional woodworkers, and tool buying guides. You can ask questions and share your projects with thousands of woodworkers on my free traditional woodworking forum. Make sure you subscribe to my regular blog posts and also check out my 10 steps for getting started in traditional woodworking. Enjoy!